All right, in this video, we are going to talk about lead and lag in a network diagram. So first of all, lead and lag can be explained by um, a situation where a certain activity can't start until a certain amount of time has passed since its predecessor has been completed. An example of that would be removing forms from poured concrete. So in this case, pouring the concrete or setting up the forms, installing the forms would be an activity. Pouring the concrete would be an activity and removing the forms would be an activity. But you can't remove the forms immediately after you've poured the concrete because you need to wait a little while for the concrete to harden before you do that. So in that case, our Gantt chart for this situation might look something like this. Where we have a gap in the Gantt chart here, in this case, there's some amount of duration here because we had installed our forms and then we poured our concrete uh, and we can pour our concrete right after we're done installing the forms but then we have to wait some amount of time, for example, before we can remove the forms while the concrete's hardening. Uh, normally, uh, previous to this in a Gantt chart, you would obviously, you'd always just be starting right after an activity ends. So this is just introducing the idea that that might not always be the case. And if we were going to draw the PDM network diagram for this particular project that we have here, uh, it would look just like this where we denote the lag by writing FS7 above the line. Now the reason we have FS7 is because this is a finish to start relationship, uh, but there's seven days of lag in between. Uh, all of these relationships that we've been learning up until now have been finish to start, and actually in the next video we'll talk about all of the different types of relationships. But for now, uh, if you see FS7, that means once this one finishes, you wait seven days till this guy can start, and that gives us our FS7. And if you want, you can just go ahead and fill in your, your early start and early finish for each of these if you want, and it would just look like this. And you would notice that because there is only one path of this project, uh, the total float and free float for each of these activities would be zero. All right, I will see you in the next video, and we will go over start-start relationships, finish-start, start-finish, and finish-finish relationships. See you there.